Welcome back everybody. This is going to be the first video of actual science content. Okay, make sure that if you are watching this and you have not submitted your first assignment, which is just a blank Word document into Teams, make sure that you take care of that first uh, before moving on. Now for this section, we're actually going to have two videos um, because you guys won't be able to access the FET simulation that I need you to um, get to because you guys don't have Java. Uh, so I'm going to be also videoing that as well, as well as talking to you today about the history of atomic theory. Okay, so let's get into it. We're starting with the atom. Let's review what the atom is. Okay, so what is an atom? Definition, an atom is the smallest unit of matter. Now, obviously, when you get into more complicated chemistry, they're going to change this and say that there's something even smaller um, and that sort of thing. But don't worry about that. For our purposes, view it as the smallest unit of matter. Okay, so an atom is made up of things. Protons, they have a positive charge. Neutrons, they have no charge. Those things are located in the nucleus of our atom. As you can see right here on our little um, picture, the positives and the neutral and the neutral particles are housed in the nucleus. The electrons are the negative charges and they float around the nucleus. Okay, the current model that we use for the atom is called the electron cloud model, which we'll get into more detail in a little bit. The atomic model has changed throughout the centuries, starting in 400 BC when it looks like a billiard ball. Okay, so this first model we're going to call is the billiard ball model. Okay, that was made up by a person in ancient Greece called Democritus. Okay, this Greek philosopher began to search the description of matter uh, 2,400 years ago. Okay, he asked, could matter, okay, everything that exists on earth be divided into smaller and smaller pieces infinitely okay so you can take this phone and divide it into smaller pieces and then into smaller pieces and then into smaller pieces okay and he wondered could you ever get to something where you can no longer divide it okay so his theory was that matter could not be divided infinitely and that eventually you would get to the smallest pieces of matter okay thus he coined the term atom okay from the greek that i believe it's called atomos a-t-o-m-o-s and that's where the word atom comes from this piece is the indivisible one okay he named it and it literally means not to be cut okay you can't cut any further than the atom Okay. To Democritus, uh, atoms were small, hard particles that were made of the same material but were different shapes and sizes. Okay. Atoms were infinite in number and they were always moving around and joining together. Okay. But thus again, it was still called the billiard ball or we still refer to it as the billiard ball model because he just viewed them as these little balls that collided together or connected together in certain ways. Okay. Then people ignored this theory for 2000 years. Okay. Basically at that point Aristotle was the big philosopher at the time and people accepted his theory that there were four elements earth, wind, uh, fire, and water and that's what made up all the matter and that's pretty much what people accepted for a long time. <clears throat> okay, so here's kind of a timeline of atomic theory. Okay, so the Greek model of Democritus starts here, and then from there all the way to the Dalton model in 1803, Aristotle's four elements was what everybody believed. Okay, and we'll talk about the Dalton model here on the next slide. Okay, Dalton's model. Uh, chemist John Dalton performed a number of experiments that eventually led to the acceptance of the idea of atoms. Um, his model is very similar to Democritus's model. He just was able to, instead of just theorize it, do actual experiments to prove it. Okay. He deduced that all the elements are composed of atoms. 
Um, atoms are indivisible and indestructible particles. Atoms of the same element are exactly alike. Atoms of different elements are different. Um, and then you can make compounds joining multiple atoms and multiple elements to make bigger things. Okay, so again, this is still the billiard ball model, okay, where we still just think that the atoms are just these little balls and you just keep adding them and connecting them, and that's all that they are. Okay, then came Thompson's plum pudding model. Okay, in 1897, he provided the first hint that an atom is made up of even smaller parts than just the atom. Okay, so this is where we're trying to get into talking about protons and neutrons and electrons. Okay, so finally somebody comes up with a different idea. He proposed that we had a model like this. Okay, so basically an atom is this gel of all positive material with little negatives sprinkled in there. Okay, so a plum pudding is basically like a cake. Okay, like a cake with little pieces of plum in there. That's why it's called the plum pudding model. Okay, so imagine that like the cake is all the positive material and then all of the little pieces of fruit inside that cake is the electrons as we know it now, okay? but they're all the negative particles. And so basically what he did to do this was he emitted um, some negative particles at a neutral um, vial of gas. And basically what he saw is that negatives were being emitted from this gas which he didn't think was possible because the gas was neutral. And so that's why he believed that the interior itself was positive. Okay? And then when it collided with that neutral gas, then it made the electrons repel. Okay? So all the electrons are being emitted away from uh, the positive that was on the inside. All right, so then we come to Rutherford, and Rutherford had his own experiment, okay? And he ran a stream of positive particles, so opposite of what um, our plum pudding model says, but he says that he runs a positive particles into a thin sheet of gold foil. Now, from that, he got even more different data and different experiences, and so he came up with a new idea. Okay, so once he fired, these positively charged bullets, we'll call them bullets, okay, most of them passed right through these gold atoms in this gold sheet and went straight through to the other side. Okay, So that was the first thing that happened. Some of them, however, did bounce away from the gold sheet and went in different directions. Okay, And so what he came to believe is that there must have been something else in that gold that was also positive to make those charges repel. Because if you remember back to our charge unit, light charges repel each other. Okay, so if they're gonna repel, then they must repel because they're the same charge. Okay, so a bunch came through and some repelled. The results of this could mean to him that most of the atoms are made up of open space, meaning that when the positive particles were shot at it, they didn't touch or come near anything, and they just simply went straight through, and that was that, a lot of open space. But then there's also tiny little positive particles that repelled some of the positively charged bullets, and he coined the name nucleus of these atoms as the positively charged center of the atom. Okay, the nucleus is tiny compared to the rest of the atom. So he said it was very, very small because if you imagine the atom itself, the rest of it, the positive particles could just pass straight through and there would be no issues. And then we finally get to the Bohr model, one of the most popular models for the atom. Okay, um, Danish scientist Niels Bohr proposed an improvement in his model and he placed each electron, okay, so we have both positives in the middle in the nucleus and we have a scatter of electrons on the outside but he placed them in specific energy levels and by doing so put them in specific orbits as we're going to see 
Okay, according to Bohr's atomic model, electrons move in definite orbits, much like the planets around the sun. Uh, these orbits or energy levels are located around the nucleus um, at a certain distance away. So if you imagine on our little picture here, we've got the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus in the center. Okay, one energy level out, we have two electrons. Okay, and then you go out another energy level and you have a certain amount of electrons and you just keep going out and the energy levels get different. Then we get to the wave model, um, which uses de Broglie, I don't even know how to say his name, de Broglie, uh, his wave mechanics um, in order to explain how the electrons move in those orbits. So what he proposed is that because they travel like waves they don't actually have a definite orbit okay so instead they move up and down and around um, in these wave-like patterns and there's not a specific orbit like our earth has around the sun okay so there isn't a definite path okay one step further from that is the electron cloud model, which is what we accept today. Uh, Schrodinger and Heisenberg are the ones who came up with that. Okay? And it's kind of a piggyback off of the wave model itself. Um, it is impossible to determine the exact location of an electron. They are so fast and they are so small that it is impossible to know exactly where an electron is. So the probable location of an electron is based on how much energy the electron has. According to what we know is the modern atomic model, an atomic an atom has a small positively charged nucleus surrounded by a large region in which there are enough electrons to make the atom neutral. Okay, so they aren't in definite positions. Okay, we just know that they are there in order to make our atoms neutral. Okay, so in this electron cloud, depending on their energy, the electrons can be anywhere in that cloud okay at any given time electrons with the lowest energy are found uh, in the energy level that's closest to the nucleus and energies with the highest energy are found in the outermost energy levels because if you imagine those ones are going super fast um, they're not getting pulled in as much by the positive nucleus because of their charge difference um, and so they have the higher energy and thus they are in the outermost energy level. Okay, so as of right now, the electron cloud model is what we know, and basically it's a best guess of where electrons are around the atom. Okay, so just to give you kind of a summary, okay, we have uh, five different models really that we're talking about. The billiard ball model is talking strictly about um, Democritus and Dalton, okay, that's all billiard ball. Okay, Thompson, okay, had his model, okay, that was the plum pudding model. Okay, then once Rutherford did his experiment, that led to the Bohr model. Okay, the Bohr model is the one that had all the orbits and that sort of thing. Okay, and then lastly, we have the two different ones. We have the wave model, and we have, let me see if I can get a different color, I'll do red. The current model is the cloud model. And you can kind of see what each of them did here with my little chart. Okay, so billiard ball model said things were, that atoms were indivisible, meaning that there's nothing smaller than an atom. There's no electrons, there's no neutrons, no um, protons or anything like that. Um, Thompson and Rutherford both in their models had electrons in them. Um, Rutherford went one step further in defining the nucleus um, with his gold experiment. Bohr had not only electrons nucleus but then he also put those electrons in an orbit around the nucleus. Wave models kind of uh, went away from the whole orbit idea in that electrons actually move in wave-like motion instead of in straight lines around the nucleus. Um, and then finally the cloud model where the electrons are moving so fast that we actually don't know exactly where they are. Um, we can simply just guess 
based on what we know about their energy. All right, so this concludes the history of the atom. The next step is going to be watching and filling out your assignment for the next uh, history of the atom FET. I will be talking during that video about what I'm showing you, what things I'm selecting, um, and you guys are just going to follow along and answer your questions. Make sure you upload that to Teams, and I will see you next time.